Okay, so what I'm going to go through now is the Gornot equilibrium. All right, so what we have is the demand function. Price is equal to 60 minus Q, where Q is the sum of the outputs of you and your competitor. Okay, so Q is actually equal to uh, Q1. Okay, so firm one's quantity plus Q2, um, firm two's quantity. Okay, so we're in the situation only once. Um, us and our competitor have to announce the individual outputs at the same time. Um, so we choose the Nash equilibrium strategy. How much will we choose to produce and what is the expected uh, profit? Okay, let's have a look. So we know the marginal cost is equal to zero. That's what the question said. Okay. All right, so this is our demand function. Okay, um, Q is equal to Q1 uh, plus Q2. We know the marginal cost is equal to zero. Okay. Um, all right. So that means that price is equal to 60 minus Q1 minus Q2. How did I get that? Well, Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2. So essentially, I'm just saying, well, put them both in the function. Minus Q1, minus Q2. If you don't like the way it's written, you can say minus Q1. Okay, same thing. Doing it this way, though, where price is equal to 60 minus Q1 minus Q2 can allow us to identify the marginal revenue of firm 1 as well as firm 2. Okay, so marginal revenue of firm 1 will be equal to 60. That always remains the same. The only thing that changes with marginal revenue is double the slope. So we double the slope of quantity 1 of firm 1 minus Q2. Marginal revenue of firm 2 is equal to 60 minus Q1 minus 2Q2. Okay, so firm 2's marginal revenue, you double the slope of firm 2's quantity. Okay, so we know that marginal cost equals marginal revenue. That is how we maximize profit. And so marginal cost equals zero, equals 60 minus Q. Let's go for 2Q1. You can choose any one of the two. You can still find the exact answer because it's an equilibrium. Minus Q1. Q2, sorry. Okay, um, so now we just need to find out um, what the function is of Q. Quite simple. Let's just place 2Q1 on the other side. Okay, so all we did is we plussed to get rid of that and to put it on the side. Okay, so now we divide by both sides by 2, and that gives us Q1 because that cancels out. 60 divided by 2 is equal to 30. Q2 is equal, divided by 2 is equal to half of Q2. Okay, and so that is firm one's reaction curve. Okay, that's firm one reaction curve. Okay, so that is the first part. But now we can find out what firm two's reaction curve is. Firm two's reaction curve is the exact same because we're in equilibrium. Okay, so Q two equals 30 minus uh, 0 0.5 Q1 and that'll be firm 2 reaction curve okay now from that we can actually identify um, what quantity each firm will produce now we need to know that both firms are identical. Okay, so Q1 is equal to Q2. One of the assumptions. Okay, if Q1 is equal to Q2, then we can use the first reaction curve of firm one. Our firm one will react to firm two. Our firm two will react to firm one. We're using the first reaction curve. So we're looking at how firm one will react to firm two. Equals 30 minus 0.5. Now I nearly wrote. Q2, although we assume that Q1 is equal to Q2, therefore Q1 equals 30 minus 0.5 Q1 
plus 0.5q1 to both sides to get rid of that. Okay, therefore q1. Equal to 32 divided by 1.5, which is equal to 20. Therefore, Q2 is equal to 20. So that's the equilibrium quantity. All right, so Q1 equals 20, Q2 equals 20. Now, to find the price, we simply place the two quantities back into the function, which we said was this one over here. That was the function. That was our reaction curves, which we identified. And so we're looking at this function, and we're going to substitute these two values into that function. Um, using our word for function, just so it makes more sense to you guys, it's actually the demand curve. Okay, demand equation. So we're placing these two values into the demand equation. 60 minus... Uh, 20, sorry, I don't know why I refer to 20 minus 20 is equal to 60 minus 20 equals 40 minus 20 equals 20. Okay, so the price is 20. Therefore, the profit of firm 1, there is no marginal cost and there is no fixed costs. Okay, so it's the uh, uh, profit is equal to 20 times the price. equals 400 and we know that they're identical so the profit of firm 2 is also equal to 400 because 20 times 20 equals 400 now using this information we are actually able to draw the reaction curves okay and the reaction curves are drawn as follows quantity comes here Quantity goes there. This is firm one's reaction curve. Okay. Sorry with the bad drawing, that's supposed to touch there. Um, and that's you just place the uh, profits over there. And so that's firm one's reaction curve and that's firm two's reaction curve. Okay. You do not have to draw this to get marks in the exam. Um, but drawing it might give you some extra marks because it shows understanding, so it's up to you. Okay, so that is part A of question 910. Now we're looking at part B. So part B is simply saying, suppose that you have to announce your upper before your competitor does. How much will you choose to produce? What is your expected profit? Isn't an advantage or disadvantage to move first. Okay, so we're looking at first mover and second mover advantages and so on. To identify, um, we have to look at the firm two reaction curve, okay? Because we are going to be the ones placing the output first, which is firm one. So who's going to react? Firm two will react, not us, okay? We're not going to react to our own output choice. Firm two will react to the output we choose. Okay, so their function is equal to that. Okay, um, and so that is the reaction curve. So what we're going to do um, is just place that back into the main function, the main quantity demanded. Okay, so it's 60 minus Q1 minus Q2. Q2 is equal to this. Okay, and so that gets substituted in here. Okay, 60 minus 30 is equal to 30, and Q1 minus 0.5 Q1 is equal to 0.5 Q1. And so that's the new demand curve. Okay, the marginal revenue of that, um, so we talked about double the slope, 30 remains the same. Okay, so that is the uh, marginal revenue. Marginal cost is equal to zero. Marginal cost needs to equal marginal revenue. So zero equals 30 minus Q1, 
plus Q1 on both sides. Therefore, Q1 is equal to 30. So that's the quantity which we are going to choose as firm 1. Therefore, firm 2, using their um, reaction curve, so this is how they're going to react to the quantity which we chose. Half of it is 15. As you can see, we have a first mover advantage. We can produce more. Okay, so as a first mover, we are producing more than the second firm. So that's our, that's our quantity, and that's their quantity. Now the price is equal to 60 minus Q1 minus Q2. Therefore, the price is equal to 60 minus. Um, 30 minus 15 is equal to 15. That is the price. 30 because 30 plus 15, remember you can say so you can change it around like that, is equal to 15. Now don't forget, you can easily change like that. So 60 minus Q1 minus Q2 means 60 minus Q1 plus Q2. Just making maths easier for you. All right. So that's the price of 15. Those are the two quantities. Um, so all we have to do now is calculate the profit of firm 1. They have, they're producing 30 units at a price of $15. Okay, so 10 times 15 is 150, multiplied by 3 is 450. Okay, and the the, the um, profit of firm um, 2 is equal to 15 times the price of 15 uh, is equal to uh, half of that. 225. So clearly there is a first mover advantage. Okay, so that is the Gornot equilibrium. Um, essentially, the most important thing is to look at the demand function, then identify the reaction curves. Then equate the two to find the equilibrium price, equilibrium quantities. In part B, we are the first movers, so we simply look at the reaction curve of firm 2, place it into the demand equation, and identify our quantity. So that's the quantity we choose, and then we can look again at the reaction curve and identify what and how they will react. So what they're going to produce, how they're going to react towards our quantity. Then we have the two quantities. And we simply place them in the demand function to find the price, and we can identify our profits. Okay, so we can now answer the question. All right, so how much will you choose to produce? Well, we will choose 30, um, and our profit will be 450, which is higher than theirs, of 225. So yes, there is an advantage as a first mover, and we are not able to explain ourselves. So that's the question. I uh, hope this helped. Um, thank you very much. Bye-bye.